Hurricane Aaron did not make landfall here in the United States, but here in the state of New Jersey, you would have thought she did from all of the flooding that we saw. And this brought up a lot of questions. Why could or how could a hurricane so far away hit New Jersey so hard in flooding? And really, it comes down to two different things. It's enormous size and it's slow forward moving motion. And I figured you guys had so many questions. I run ahead and kind of research a little bit for you. So before we get started and dive into this, make sure you subscribe, you turn in notifications, and you give this video a thumbs up. A special thank you all to my patrons at patreon.com. It's because of them we can do videos like this. If you want to support the channel and have your name at the end of the video, all you have to do is click the links in the description below. Let's go ahead and get started. This video is sponsored by Petro Cohen. Were you injured on the job? Whether you're working the boardwalk, serving tables, or serving the public, did you know you have rights? Petro Cohen fights for workers just like you. Give them a call at 888-675-7607 or visit petrocohen.com to get the compensation that you deserve. As you may guess, I am no meteorologist. I'm just your regular everyday reporter. But we always rely heavily on the National Hurricane Center or the National Weather Center, one being based out of Mount Holly, New Jersey. And so we have to go back about a week and a half as this storm was starting to grow. And really, there are five different factors that created a lot of these storms. But this one grew out of, once again, five different principles. First of all, warm Atlantic waters. It says here that Aaron had traveled an unusually warm stretch of the water in the western Atlantic. Warm water is a fuel for these hurricanes, and because of how warm the water was, it allowed this storm to continue to grow. Then we had a low wind shear. When it comes to low wind shear, it says right here that low wind shear allows a hurricane to maintain a strong, organized circulation and expand outward without being torn apart, meaning that if there was a high wind shear, that pressure along with the hurricane would actually make it dissipate. But because we didn't really have that, it just kept on growing and growing to, once again, nearly 600 miles. Number three, which is one of the biggest things we had to deal with, was the slow forward motion. You see, because Aaron was moving so slowly, it allowed the ocean to turn up more, which is why even several days before we even had Hurricane Aaron, we already had rip current warnings. We had it for about three or four days before she came, which we were telling people before, only swim in front of lifeguards, only be up to your waist, etc. That slow motion allowed the water to be churned up even more. Number four, atmospheric moisture. There was so much moisture in the air into the mid to upper level atmosphere, which encouraged the growth of this hurricane. And then number five, interaction with surrounding weather systems, which, in the favor of us, we luckily had another pressure that was just in Pennsylvania, which was actually pushing the hurricane down. If that pressure wasn't there, that hurricane would have actually moved closer to land. And as you may have seen the damage from just it being that far away, imagine what it would have been like if it was even closer to the state of New Jersey. Now, why did it cause so much damage and so much flooding when it was that far away? That's where you really have to understand tidal waves. As we mentioned before, the motion of this hurricane was at such a slow motion that it created a system in which it could really dig into the water, creating bigger and bigger waves. And if we look at the official readings from the National Weather Center off of the coast of the Outer Banks, we know that waves hit about 45 feet. Imagine that range. That is something that we hadn't seen in quite some time, which meant that if it's 45 feet out there, by the time it hits the shore, it's quite massive. And we know from what we reported on in North Wildwood, we were seeing about 10 to 15 foot waves slamming into our coast. So because of the slow movement, it created massive waves, which then those waves overpowered our beaches, our dunes, our rock systems, and then started flooding into the streets. You saw that in Cape May, in Brigantine, in Wildwood, and it really pushed the water up high. You look at Wildwood Crest, the water was all the way up to the dunes. In Wildwood, the water was not only 
under the boardwalk. It was starting to pour onto the streets. And for those who don't know, the Wild Woods have some of the, actually, they have the largest beaches in the state of New Jersey. But because there is no dune system in Wildwood stopping that water, it creates a system in which the water just go over that flat beach and goes right into the streets. Once again, this was not a direct hit from the hurricane. It was from a hurricane several hundred miles away. Imagine if that hurricane actually hit the beaches of Wildwood. We'd be having a different story going on as though the boardwalk was destroyed. I'm pointing this out about the island-wide beach dune system, which is still not happening at this very moment. And clearly this hurricane does point out to it being needed. That being said, when these waves start slamming, it pushes water back and back and back. And while you're thinking about the beaches, you also should be thinking about the bays because water is not only being pushed onto the beach, it's being pushed into the bays. And the bays can only contain several feet of water before it starts overflowing. And in the wild woods, our bulkheads aren't as high as they should be. I, I forget what the exact standard should be for bulkheads in the state of New Jersey. I know they were trying to raise them very high and some people got angry by that. But because the water can only be sustained to a certain height for so long, the water started pouring in. And so we started seeing the pressure being pushed into the bays that water emptied into the streets. And in a combination of it being high tide, it being almost a new moon, and this crazy pressure, we had the flooding. As they say, the perfect storm, even though we really, really weren't having much of the actual storm itself. We weren't having the rain. We weren't having tropical storm winds. We weren't really having much of anything. It was just a combination of many different things hitting all at the same time. And we definitely know that the high tide is what really pushed us over the edge, mostly because after high tide went away and low tide came, the streets were fine. So we saw a perfect storm of many different things. And the one thing I have to point out is the fact that we did this storm without the winds. If there was the addition of the crazy winds pushing that water, it would have been a lot worse. And I want this to be sort of like a very good understanding of this was just a bad storm. And it did this in just a bad storm. Imagine what's going to happen over the next few weeks, potentially a month through October, if a hurricane this strong does make landfall near the state of New Jersey. It will have a devastating effect. Storms are getting worse. The waters are getting warm. Believe it or not, because of how the water was pushed and pulled because of the hurricane, the water temperatures actually dropped. And so... As we're still deciding on what to do with a larger island-wide dune system here in Wildwood, or if other towns are looking at beach replenishments and bulkheads, etc., we have to understand that if Mother Nature is acting this bad when we don't have these systems put in place, when a major 50-year storm does happen, we're going to have a 1962 Easter storm in the Wildwoods, potentially in other areas. And now is the kind of like warning, wake up call of, hey, we need to start preparing for this now so that it's not gonna cause major issues down the line. I say this as someone who has been following all of the beach erosion issues in North Wildwood and bulkheads and, you know, thank God for North Wildwood building those emergency bulkheads because if they were not there, there would have been water on the streets. There would have been millions of dollars of infrastructure destroyed and other things. But luckily right now, we only have a couple hundred cars with water damage. Some people that get water, and my house alone had eight inches of water. So there are there is more damage to it, but this was not a hurricane direct on, nor was it really generally close, and we really didn't have many of the things that we would have experienced if we did have a hurricane. So please, learn from this hurricane. Please see how things were so that when the hurricanes do start coming, and they're going to, because this is the largest we ever had early on, you would be prepared for it. And when people start warning you about moving your cars and to get the higher grounds, we mean it because we saw two bridges be shut down because of the flooding. 
And this comes at the busiest time down here in the Wild Woods. Ultimately, I want you guys to be safe. I want you to think safe, and I don't want you swimming in the ocean when there are no lifeguards. There was a lot of rescues, and thank God we have amazing lifeguards and first responders, because even I saw police officers running full gear into the water to go save people who didn't listen to the sound advice. So right now, it may be sunny out, maybe beautiful. We still have a little bit of rip currents, but just play it safe, swim near lifeguard, and hopefully this video explained a little bit of what had happened this past few days. I will, of course, always keep you guys updated on things happening all over now, I guess, South Jersey, because we're covering everything now. So if you haven't done so yet, please do subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As always, I'll see you on the beach, which today is the perfect beach day. I am literally going to go get changed and hop right into the ocean because I need to do it, though the water is a little bit colder today. As always, like I said, I'll see you on the beach. <laughs> Always a winner and always a prize. That's right, guys. Who's up? Who's next? Who's ready? We've got a winner every game. We've got a prize every single time. Always a winner and always a prize. That's right, guys. Who's up? Who's next? Who's ready to play? Who's going to be our next 